another workshop by Tyos. Today we have with us Mr. Suresh Kumar. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. Uh, welcome to our workshop, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. So I would like to introduce and uh, tell you our audience a little bit about uh, Suresh, sir. He's from Bangalore and a sculpture artist by profession, but he's also a very passionate gardener. And uh, he's currently working on a community gardening project called Sarjapura Curries, where they work on bringing back the forgotten vegetables of India. He shares more about his work on his Instagram page called Sarjapura underscore Curries. The link is in the description box below. You can go and check it out uh, and uh, see the amazing work that uh, he does. And so today we are very excited to learn more about the naturally growing wild vegetables and greens of India, sir. So let's get this session started. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. It's a little bit uh, hot. I'm there in a kind of open setup in the farm for the better light and uh, kind of a better uh, ambience around. So I'm surrounded with uh, coconut trees, berries, right, just right uh, on the right side of me. And we have sounds of the ducks, which are like... Yes, uh, yes we can hear those sounds also. It's looking very beautiful, sir. You're in a very green and uh, beautiful environment. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you have to just bear with me for the glares because it's too bright and I can't open my eyes. So oh, okay, no problem. And uh, so, first of all, I want to like Zaira. I want to thank Zaira and the team uh, for uh, inviting me this on this. And it's a very formal setup that I've never done such a <laughs> kind of a staged setup till now. It's been always on like walking in the farms and uh, live tours and all that. So post uh, COVID restrictions, there's a lot of students and a lot of uh, Oh, I'm so sorry. I think we've lost connection with the speaker. We'll get uh, connected with them soon. Uh, stay with us since uh, he's on the farm. There is ought to be some connection problem. We'll get back to you soon. Hello, sir. Welcome back. <laughs> yes, we got you back now. Hello, Zara. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Are you able to hear me? Hello. I can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Are you able to hear me, sir? Hello. Uh, can you see me? Yes, I can sorry. see. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No problem. No problem, sir. It's okay. 
Yeah, we are back. Yes, yes. It's okay, sir. The the camera is perfect. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. All good. Yeah. Welcome back, sir. <laughs> we can yes. start again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we are here and uh, I've kind of rented out this uh, farm space uh, uh, from my uh, relative's cousin. And uh, before this, uh, as if you can read about, uh, what we have been doing from last three years, that we set up a like kind of a community kitchen gardens uh, uh, in a community center in a village nearby, and that's the place I was born, and uh, where my mother comes from. And there, the idea, initial idea, was to revive this uh, knowledge, uh, both as the recipes and also the knowledge about the vegetables, which is kind of a forgotten. So we set up a small nursery and a kitchen garden there, so that to introduce this again back and to encourage women in the villages to uh, get back into the kitchen garden. It's a suburb. Uh, on the south of Bangalore, with border with uh, Tamil Nadu here, and so there's a lot of uh, construction activity and the real estate happening all like any other cities. So we we were seeing that how the uh, though they had a lot of spaces around their house, the uh, the gardening gardens were shrinking. They hardly have any uh, like uh, edible gardens of the thing. So to revive this, we started this project, and it was it was uh, uh, it took off very well. Both uh, just uh, uh, like uh, the presence was online. For the uh, for the urban and other 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 crowd, and also in the villages, any anybody around the village, for the villagers and the uh, newly moved in migrant uh, communities, uh, gated communities, and all those people could really walk into this nursery and get the saplings or get the knowledge or uh, or uh, try their hands as volunteering and things. So it was happening. And then, then the real challenge came is when farmers, some of the small farmers, asked uh, how would we scale it up? How would because there's no organic uh, uh, farms around here. And uh, though there is a lot of demand uh, for organic produce uh, post-COVID situation, and uh, this project started uh, before COVID, we never ha had heard of the word also. So in in the in the in the middle of uh, the project, uh, we came across this situation uh, with the COVID, uh, and that is when we I kind of uh, me and uh, my daughter kind of isolated ourselves in this farm, nice farm, and we set up this whole thing in like one and a half uh, two years. And right now we have established, uh, in the sense, as not only as a garden but as a concept for farmers to replicate this model, to try and grow not just organically but try and grow as natural as possible and have an integrated farm. Uh, by integrated farm, what we mean is this is to be more a sustainable thing, so that the inputs uh, that gets into the farm uh, in terms of manure and other things and all, so that can be cut down by having a lot of pets and uh, animals and cattle and all that. So we work. We are working on this model here in a one-acre land, and now, uh, now on this uh, month onward, we'll be collaborating with another farmer for another one-acre land. So there are a lot of uh, interest which is shown by the farmers around, uh, but it's a long way to go. And uh, as part of the workshop, coming back here uh, to the to to stick to the theme, uh, we are strictly in this farm not growing any hybrid seeds. Like we know hybrid crops, so so we can't grow cabbage, we can't grow cauliflower or anything moon coal. So the idea is to imagine a farm, what was before 50 years, so what people ate here, what people cooked here in the, in the, in the region. So I stuck to this uh, concept and uh, initially it was like, uh, I was very nervous that how would you have such a little menu, uh, I mean like uh, offering for your customer and still want to build a, a new base. When people are asking always, uh, they want palak and methi, but whereas I'm asking them to eat ag agatikire and uh, mantakali and uh, and the uh, tree spinach and things like that, you know. So and also pumpkin shoots and bottle guard shoots and things like that. So it was very difficult initially, but uh, I stood firm. I uh, stood firm and uh, I tried to really introduce uh, these things, humble things. Uh, when there are a lot of tomato options, and, and even in the high bloom tomato varieties, I'm been growing this uh, small cherry tomatoes, which is like uh, it also can grow in the roadside and wild year around. So and also there are other. Uh, herbal greens, which actually I had to introduce, because like for example, this balloon wine, it is a medicinal actually. But uh, we we would uh, we would uh, harvest the tender ones, introduce into a mixed greens pack. So if, if at all, if we are not only uh, uh, promoting this uh, uh, traditional uh, vegetable uh, or the greens and all, we would also imagine that kind of a recipe. For example, uh, locally, they women actually go and uh, forage in the fields uh, during the monsoon season, and something called berkesopo or mixed greens. A bag full, or she will have a pallu, and the pallu will be full of 
some 20 50 uh, seasonal herbs and greens so similarly what we do is though we have amranthas and palak and everything we would offer uh, we would not offer a bundle of palak but rather we would offer a, a bundle of mixed greens like it would, it would have a seasonal greens so that is how we introduced uh, such uh, uh, concepts was uh, a traditional concept though uh, that you would uh, uh, you would get a lot of multi nutritions uh, like for example if people don't know agse kire or, or, or to cook agse so but rather we would add uh, one leaf or two leaves into the mixed greens so that the the, the customer or the or the family who's consuming them they're benefited you know and also we would make a package like something called uh, mixed vegetables so we'll have uh, sundakai or uh, ivy guard uh, and uh, turkey berry this is turkey berry and this is ivy guard so we would have add a little of this vegetables in a, in a in a mixed pack so that the the people who are not familiar uh, would uh, not i mean were hesitant to try but they would introduce uh, this uh, this vegetable nutrition in a mixed curry so something like this we introduce and uh, we are doing well in a sense but there's a long way to go in a sense because we have a lot of demand from the customer end but we still want farmers around uh, to adopt this model and work on this model so that their uh, their way of farming is much more sustainable and uh, uh, less uh, effortless so why we want to grow wild vegetables or the native vegetables is because they are very humble they don't need much attention and they go by season you know so when it rains well they thrive when there's no rain they just uh, uh, you know grow and they stay for some and for the next phase and things well for example this is uh, i want to introduce like this is a uh, sword beans literally almost like in the shape and sword and these are the tender parts of the same uh, sword beans these are very tender and you can chop this and cook like any other beans or something like that. what happened is we were growing this we wanted to introduce this uh, to the to the customers our customers uh, both uh, here around sarjapura and also bangalore city so then we uh, since it's a lot of there was no much takers so what we did is there all the pots were getting matured like this so we got an idea that we would peel this you know we would peel like this and there inside there'll be always this tender beans like this it's a beautiful beans like this you can see there's so beautiful pink and pretty beans so these beans are can be eaten raw and this can be cooked and it tastes better even better than the broad beans avrekai so this is how we introduce so there is this knowledge of of how locally they were consuming and then you have to also market this because for me it's a this project is a double edged project on one hand i i want to uh, conserve the knowledge and the practice uh, of cooking and eating at the same time i wanted to create a awareness also with with the customers so that farmers can grow uh, more of this for example uh, this uh, local uh, kind of a batwa which is to be very common here in the open fields uh, it, it's now not there not, uh, not 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 there around the villages also but there's something else uh, what you call it chakota chakrote has replaced this and uh, north indian kundru or tinda has replaced this ivy guard uh, tondakai uh, in the south so so similarly there are lot of uh, uh, the kind of uh, 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 some some things are uh, making way for the new things to come and things like that so that's why we have been little bit particular and, uh, and not really growing the mainstream vegetables like uh, spinach methi and all that but rather we want to try out all, all the varieties of amranthas you know there are 10 15 varieties of amranthas there is this ambal mantakali which is still thriving even in summer and uh, we have turkey berries that way which still thrives in a uh, good summer and we have a similar uh, family of uh, turkey berry which is called gullakai this is uh, even more thornier and uh, very uh, smaller than the, so this is a regular turkey berry and this is a smaller version of it so it's also very uh, important uh, 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 vegetable same brinjal family and they make the chutney out of it and things like that and this is a very interesting uh, tree spinach this can grow like a like a fence on your, on your farm side and uh, or it can be a, it is evergreen green cover and these leaves can be cooked and uh, or like cooked and uh, separate and also to be mixed with the other 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 main greens so this is how we have been like kind of uh, working on this project uh, in multiple perspectives one perspective is that we want to archive the recipes and when we were when we were exploring the the uh, the recipes and the knowledge we were, we we figured out that how we have lost so many uh, vegetables that's when actually i got into the uh, growing of them you know so then we set up that nursery initially and now we are doing it in a farm scale to scale up so even uh, as we are exploring and uh, trying out the models we are actually improving and collaborating with other farmers to to scale this up to scale this up so that the availability is more there so everyone one day can easily grow them and consume them not just the urban gardeners but even the f farmers communities and farmer families 
amazing sir this is an amazing concept that you have come with and a very wonderful idea a very noble idea to bring back the lost culture the lost traditions and the lost recipes of our country a very thoughtful idea sir It's amazing to hear what you're doing so for example uh, we we know that uh, uh, that uh, double beans you know the very popular one with the kidney shaped bean you know so that's very popular and it's little difficult for for, for families to grow them but whereas you have a something like very smaller variety of that and and this can really volunteer on its own and can grow and it can be like if there's a fence around or there's a, some support around any trees you know they just hang around and stay there you don't even have to sow them the seeds will fall then again the next rain comes and they thrive but there's they are very uh, like that's what i mean sustainable so when you can't grow a, a kidney bean or the regular uh, double beans you can grow this which is very humble and i mean and they grow very well and also uh, like for example we, we only know uh, that uh, ivy gourd can be consumed but ivy gourd shoots also are very medicinal like people who have a lot, a lot of mouth ulcers and all the villagers they 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 pluck this uh, tender shoots and and eat them raw so it 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 helps us so there is a lot of this kind of a medicinal uh, 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 thought behind all this uh, wild vegetables and wild greens. So similarly, uh, we really want to not to make it as like an exclusive uh, thing that uh, like people would not eat them. So we would add uh, balloon wine also in a mix uh, mix greens. So that uh, that that pack of mix greens of twenty to two fifty grams will have at least ten to fifteen of uh, uh, types of herbal edible greens. So that way that uh, they're they're benefited and also we share recipes. Both uh, we are selling us uh, some uh, uh, some uh, some of our vegetables and online courses. or uh, even for them we share our recipes like uh, people don't know how to cook a bottle gourd shoots you know for example so or the pumpkin shoots so we would share the recipe to them so that way there, there is and also the pumpkin flowers for example so people know that the uh, people eat pumpkin flowers but they don't know what to do with it so we would share some common recipes online or or any friends cooking and things like that you know or for the or the local recipes here so that way we have created some kind of a demand also and at the same time we are also supplying to it so in a way we we are experimenting on the local uh, uh, circle here we have uh, the base we created and also now uh, with that take knowledge and with that confidence we are taking it to uh, scale up a little bit and take it to further uh, further more reach uh, within the city of bangalore and things like that so there is this uh, there is this uh, app who deliver uh, online and also we we uh, we deliver to them and they take it to the uh, other customers whom we can't reach out we are delivering only around 15 kilometers of radius oh okay so we are trying to uh, reach out to more people around your area as well to other states and now not other states but uh, mostly for bangalore city uh, oh. for now because these, these all have to be delivered fresh because they can't they don't have a, a lot of shelf life and things like that and it has to be consumed fresh within the within the day so okay. our intent is Uh, uh, fortunately, we are very close to the city, uh, and many farmers in this village actually uh, are selling the vegetables, but mainstream vegetables, and uh, they uh, they are, they are doing very well in the sense. But just that, when you think of the soil quality, environment, and their health issues, and the and the customers' point of view, actually, so uh, keeping all this in mind is is a, is a very dangerous thing. That the soil has lost all its nutrition, so we have to rebuild the soil, you know, and we have to rebuild our own health system also. and also to introduce thing by all these things we don't only uh, uh, benefit as as human beings but also we are, we are we are for example encouraging lot of birds and lot of insects also to try, uh, to consume them and the sagati humble agati chire uh, flowers are consumed by parakeets so much you know or uh, or uh, or uh, uh, the fruits of ivy gourd lot of birds are uh, are attracted to the fruits of the uh, uh, ivy gourd for example so that way is it is a system within So it's not just we are we are we are seeing it from the uh, human perspective, but we are also seeing from the environmental perspective. Birds and animals prefer this desi vegetables rather than hybrid uh, vegetables. Maybe there will be a lot of pests and things like that, uh, uh, like because these vegetables are a little bit alien to these conditions. This this vegetables are uh, seeds; they can't reproduce in conditions. So strictly in my farm, uh, we are growing only what uh, vegetable or green which we can reproduce the seeds here. So. Uh, our gardeners who work here they know from all the stages not just the uh, stage of harvesting but they would know the stage of the uh, making seeds saving seeds conserving and how to sow and how to harvest the grains and also packaging so they every uh, anybody who, who, who works in a farm would know all the process 
whereas in the mainstream farm that doesn't happen there will be a separate people to harvest the vendors or the businessmen business uh, contractors and there there will be uh, uh, there will be the daily wages laborers who will do mechanically certain jobs and things so that way your in a way as the gardeners who are working with us also will develop some kind of a knowledge even if they want to go back the natives and start uh, i mean some of them have been telling me that you know they also want to do something similar when they go back uh, after they're done with the city life and things like that so that way anybody who's working with us will be also uh, not seeing it as a kind of a mechanical job but they're they're just seeing it as a kind of a life cycle here. even with the cattle we have cows uh, desi cows and they also make manure uh, uh, like fertilizer like jivamruta and gana jivamruta and all that so they we also are conscious and what our cows are eating you know so the, so that we get uh, not only the good milk but also we get the quality manure you know from the, so we try and head down on a lot of uh, things that we 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 would want to spend on uh, uh, for the input like manure and other things from outside and especially seeds seeds actually uh, i'm very particular about having uh, growing our own seeds as maximum as possible okay that's wonderful sir like bringing back uh, going back to our roots it's a small step to you know get uh, connected with our roots again and uh, trying to create that environment that we had uh, years ago yeah so there's a lot more to do because even in this workshop i'm not really introducing everything because we are in the middle of uh, uh almost beginning of april it's off season you all know and uh, not much green green ground in the natural vegetation so whatever you see here are are here because we have been like watering the farm and you know we are maintaining certain things so for example even within this uh, beans there is another variety called jack beans this seed unlike this purple it will be white so there's so much diversity and there's so much uh, uh, varieties in it also like the wing beans we have i think a lot of people know this wing beans uh, this also is very uh, like wild wild really global in in, uh, in the in the in the in the good rainy areas and things like that so uh, we also have a purple strain in this so similarly there are lot for me to learn every year in the in the in, uh, as we as we uh, explore both that and the exploration is happening with the community it's not that uh, because uh, it's not we, we run a restaurant and we are experimenting in the kitchens but i go to the people i go to the women in the village cross check with the recipes and cross check with their knowledge and especially like people women who had been like grazing cattle in the sheep and all they have a very intense knowledge about all this wild vegetables and things like that and and and, and also the, it is it is very i, I also have come across like three or four types of uh, some greens which are uh, totally lost now it's not there in the region at all because the reason is not that uh, uh, just urbanization it's also that farmers are using extensive use of herbicides which kills lot of other uh, main herbs and uh, Uh, the greens and all. So in our farm, we have an approach that we don't till the soil, don't uh, we avoid uh, digging soil. Uh, 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 no tractors is used. No, no cows and bulls are used for uh, plowing and things. Like so we do more like handcrafted. So we do. We can't. Unfortunately, the uh, the camera is fixed here. I can't show much behind me. So the 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 entire farm is work is working on this uh, idea of base beds so that uh, we grow uh, live greens like uh, all the kiris and sopus. and sag for the as a green cover and, and other creepers on the top and turmeric and other mint and other uh, lot of other as a as a as a as a, as a, as a multi level or multi cropping method oh wow amazing so uh, i just had one question sir like uh, when these vegetables have not been used by people since a very long time people have stopped eating them so do they like the taste of it when they try it for the first time how does it taste like yes for example this uh, classic example i have is this because people here at least the generation like who are like like uh, now 60 plus they remember the sour beans okay but that, uh, that my generation in the villages also don't remember this because they have not seen it at all yes and, and my uh, one of my uh, grandfather remembers like i i remember him telling me that yeah they used to uh, uh, climb that uh, climb the sagate trees or uh, take a big stick and get this beans from the sagate agate uh, things and they uh, and the mother is to cook this and this my mother generation also has forgotten this only my oh. grandfather you know so like that there is always some but the plants are around people are feeding uh, this agate kire to the goats and cows and things like that not the plants are gone but the knowledge is missing so now uh, i i this this season i want to mainstream the agate seeds 
अगति किरे और अगते सोपो एंड 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 ग्रो द स्पॉट go to spots and and then introduce it to the customer so this is like like every year every year or every season i make certain agendas and i focus on something like that and then that's when i can i can make so something like that uh, what i'm trying about the success is this uh, about this happened uh, one year back so uh, today uh, we are selling this uh, spots continuously from last 7 uh, 8 months it's also giving us good money without less investment and on that it does, this plant doesn't need any any really Uh, like lot of care and lot of pests or any it doesn't attack any pests and things so even in summer they are still fresh and tender and nice okay wow so we have a comment here coming in uh somebody is asking can you talk about volunteering opportunities at your farm uh yes uh, there are uh, there are interesting uh, school and this azim uh, premji university very close by and there are a lot of students and young even yesterday there was one international school kids coming by I think volunteers. Yes, we are. We are. Uh, you we welcome volunteers. But now uh, we are uh, in the in the stage of building a, a, a like a proper structure because it's our not own land. We are on a rent. So the landlord is building us a small space for us to rent, and uh, where me and my daughter would move in this uh, May uh, or June. Uh, so definitely, then on we can really host uh, outstation uh, volunteers also. But now we have been hosting only like uh, volunteers were only from neighbor neighborhood like. Who, would not stay in the farm but they would go back and work but uh, if somebody is okay with uh, sharing the uh, kitchen and sharing uh, space uh, with us uh, they are most welcome irrespective of gender and whatever it is okay that's great thank you so much sir so uh, can you tell us little about uh, you know uh, the you were talking about the medicinal uh, importance of the some of the plants so if people don't know uh like most of the people don't know about this so how do you uh you know bring awareness to the people that this plant can be used in such multiple ways how does the word reach out to people yeah. see i'm 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 totally my knowledge is based on uh, uh only the traditional knowledge though i have a uh, like i believe in ayurveda and uh, alternative things like that but i have not gone into the medicinal aspects of this thing but there is this common no- common knowledge around and there is this common uh, thing about that they have to eat seasonal for example pumpkins you don't get after this month or avraka is only in uh, in december you know and, and now you don't get much greens so people eat uh, more of the uh, beans and all this uh, dried up seeds and all those things which have they so which are they have side, uh, kind of a dried in the season so i'm i'm strictly going by the knowledge of the people what they were consuming at the time and i'm i'm, I'm kind of uh, kind of enhancing that aspect i'm really not going into in the, in the kind of uh, uh, like uh, what i can say the medicinal value as such for example we know that agati kira is important in uh, in cultures that they eat, they eat once in a month and things like that we know that it's not be cooked or eaten every day for example it's only eaten uh, eaten on certain days of uh, of the month uh, once in a month so for that so we would we would not recommend them to uh eat full but rather i would uh, add a, a tender leaf of this in a in a uh, in a big pack of uh, thing like same with moringa leaves or any other like um, balloon wine and all this these are medicinal and herbal but at the same time if people are knowledge about consuming them uh, they'll definitely buy the whole bunch otherwise they are getting benefits of this uh, in the old packet where, where they don't have to worry about uh, uh, if there is an, something in excess as such you know so we we only people who are uh, have a knowledge would actually go for the main recipes and uh, or they uh, how it's used and things like that but on the safer side we would uh, not impose anything as such and rather we would uh, uh, study a little bit of the traditional knowledge and when to be eaten and when to be uh, things like that so only based on that we would uh, advise them to do okay so do you share uh, these information on your instagram page Yes, there is on Instagram, and we are working on a website because it's uh, it's too much work uh, for us uh, at the farm itself. And for, for me, this online presence is little less. I get that when, only when I get time when I'm home and uh, I happen to update my uh, like Instagram and things like that. So it's very difficult. One hand, you have to uh, attend the farm at the same time. You have to work up on the sales of it because every evening we get that's why we the delay happened to the meeting because uh, today Saturday we have to deliver certain vegetables to our. to another uh, uh, friend who, who who shares the produce with us so so every evening we are after 4 o'clock we are we are actually tied up with the delivery so this is another oh. one and then we have to also have follow up with the payments and things like that so that way 
I, 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 as an artist, as I said before, like uh, I'm an artist. I, as an artist, I would not talk about the money. But here in the farm uh, situation, I have to talk about the money so that this money, whatever we are getting from this uh, valuable, uh, 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 valuable produce we are, we are growing, will actually inspire the other farmer. So they they only see numbers. They only see how many lakhs, how many, how many, how many thousands you are earning in a month. So uh, that's why this this money becomes very important. That's when I get crazy and I get uh, so involved in this personally. I sometimes I, I sometimes even deliver uh, 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 the vegetables also every day. So so, so that this uh, this this is like some kind of a uh, there is a message in this. You know, not just as an uh, as a project for the urban folks or online folks, but it's also a message for the farmers around. So they I I want them to see that. Uh, how we are growing, how we are thriving uh, by sticking onto the natural methods and natural vegetables and things like that. So that 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 way, uh, it's very crucial for us that we talk about the money. I would tell the farmers how much, how much. Hey, can say bye bye dogs. <laughs> uh, That's okay. So so I would I, I would talk about the money how, how much how much I keep account of how much I heard from the sword beans from ten plants or how much. Uh, Ten plants of turkey berries gave me the money, or how much uh, uh, turmeric uh, fetches, and how many, how much uh, ten uh, uh, ten plants of ivy guard would fetch me, and things like that. So, and also we have a model. For example, as we are talking about scaling up, I would not scale up and say I would grow one acre of uh, ivy guard. Rather, I would only see how many numbers of families are depending. I mean, are, are, are that I'm counting on. So I would I would multiply. For example, if I have one family, I would. I I would grow ten vegetables for a week, so that will be replicated. If it's if I have ten more families, that will be replicated into ten into ten. But instead of making uh, like one acre of tomato or one acre of uh, uh, something else, so I would not scale up like that. I would I would rather scale up as a unit. If I have a one unit for one family, I would if I have ten families, I would make ten units of it. So do, I hope you uh, you could understand this concept. Yes, so, yes, yeah, amazing. People, yeah, if a family would need a one kitchen garden, so if there are ten families to, for me to uh, sell, so I would make ten uh, such units rather than scaling up uh, like uh, any vegetable as such. And uh, this is my advice to a lot of organic farmers also because they they are not saving seeds and they don't have heirloom seeds or they're not interested in heirloom seeds because it needs a lot of work to save seeds and also to grow from them. So they all go to the nurseries and get the saplings, ready saplings, whichever the company is uh, supplying for them. And uh, they they would uh, ex, ex, uh, uh, like ex, they all, always grow in excess, and, and and unfortunately some of the organic farmers have to sell their organic produce in a normal market price. So that's the story around. So I I'm been requesting them not to do that, but rather stick to this uh, 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 the, this heirloom and basic seeds, and uh, which which is very important. That that's how we as organic farmers can really uh, kind of claim back this this whole. Uh, uh, think of, about uh, it's, it's a kind of power to the farmer itself, or power to the woman, or power to the gardener. You know, so that they'll know, they'll decide what to eat and what the family needs and what the what the season needs and all. You know, otherwise we'll end up like seeing today that we'll have only two varieties of tomato in the market and two varieties of uh, beans in the market. You know, there are 30, 40 plus varieties of tomatoes and and at least uh, five types of beans around. You know. So this, 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 so this is the sad part of it. So we, if we hand over everything to a company or something, so we'll have difficulties that we'll not be having only options. So like, for example, in a farm, there are 15 to uh, uh, 10 types of uh, uh, bottle guards. But in the market, you'll find only one type of bottle guard, despite everyone having seeds and it's easily growable. So, you know, so it, it hurts a lot. So that's why actually I request all, I mean, I'm not, see, I'm, I'm very uh, grateful to all the kitchen gardeners and the terrace gardeners and all this because they are the ones actually in a way who are saving seeds, who have seeds and who are passionate about giving healthy food for the family and things like that. But whereas when it's scaled up to a uh, to a farmer level, it's very difficult for them to think about such uh, such uh, gestures or, or or such such philosophy as such. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So we have uh, one comment here from Varsha. She wants to know, uh, like, if you can share some information about balloon wine. Uh, balloon wine, uh, it is uh, very easily growing uh, uh, seasonal thing, but uh, but it's not seasonal in terms of uh, in the open fields. It's seasonal because of the lack of rain for next four months. 
but if it's uh, it has a good vegetation and all they have a very interesting balloon it's unfortunately it's not there's a tender plant uh, this uh, uh, other than the edible aspects of it they also use it in external leaves like if people have a uh, like joint pains and uh, uh, pain and physical pains you know so this uh, uh, i read that this can be grounded i made as a paste and uh, applied so don't go with my words just do some research online there is enough material online of medical medicinal uses because i'm only talking from the edible perspective of it so i'm really not going into that the, that the medical applications and further uses of it so this workshop is more to have a, a overall uh, approach towards the such uh, such gardening and such farming as such so i'll not go into the details of saying that what we got would contain and what is uses and things like that but rather i would say that uh, those who want to you uh, use it in a, in a much more uh, authentic way talk to some elders or talk, or, or uh, there's enough material online do some there are also a lot of materials on youtube also because you can identify easily on a video rather than a text you know so there are a lot of pictures online so please uh, get, uh, follow the things okay sir so we have one more question from mahesh he is asking is coreopsis tincrotia fresh seeds available sorry i'm not able to pronounce that properly so what is its local name because i i am very bad with the scientific names oh okay so if mahesh if you're still online if you're watching us uh, if you can uh, send us the local name of this uh, uh, variety that you have mentioned we will be able to uh get back to you yeah or they can personal message me also later yes yes definitely so uh, you can uh, approach sir on his instagram page and uh, you can uh, uh, get the seeds that you need yeah yes sir please proceed with your uh, topic yeah well, i am open for the comments and i uh, would uh, because it will be too lengthy if i keep on talking <laughs> so i would uh, rather prefer that uh, if there's a, a comments i can address or i can take off and also yes the other aspects in our farm is not just about uh, vegetate uh, the greens and vegetables and things like that we are also uh, one as i said that that this farm is in a very sustainable model so we 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 have desi cows and we have a desi hen uh, we also sell uh, eggs because our eggs are not only taken for for consumption uh, by the by the folks around but also for from the by the farmers they take a, they they buy our hens to hatch further you know so to make the baby so that way we we are keeping the breeds very separately uh, and uh, we, we we believe in that kind of purity of breeds so we have also ducks they say ducks and uh, we have uh, rabbits also around and uh, so these are the things since we are not flowing and not digging the soil we have excess of uh, uh the 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 kind of uh, unwanted for uh, i mean in a you know farm things unwanted weeds or grass and things like that but for us that's very precious because in, in the environmental perspective these grasses this humble grasses and humble weeds and humble plants are the ones actually who who, who 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 are helping more than a tree uh to when it, when it's about working with the with the toxic gases and things like that or converting the into gases into into the soil you know and things like that so that way we respect that so we uh, our intervention is very little because a lot of people when they see our farm they are little scared of it because it's been unkept in the sense unkept is it's always wild looking there's always bushes and things like that so of course there are snakes all that but de definitely they have not harmed us as because we live in that kind of an harmony and there's there's nothing to be scared about it but just that we have to be conscious that they are around not to not oh. to really feel uh, threatened or threaten them and things like that so that way is, uh, it is a and also for example we are being growing the sweet potatoes here we are unable to consume any sweet potatoes such because the rats have been eating. so in the sense uh, okay. rats are eating a part of my farm because they're busy eating this nice food here so as a sweet potatoes and as a uh, the things so this is how you are balanced and for example uh, uh, even the parrots we corns all the time so that they're busy with the corn so they don't uh, touch other 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 produce you know things oh, so okay. if, so so, yeah, so because they the the, the parrots the parakeets only eat the corn you know which are at one stage and uh, the the rest of the plant is not eaten and if the plant uh, the rest of the plant is given to the cow you know so that way if you understand the kind of a dynamics to live with it and definitely that you don't have to really crib about uh, fortunately we don't have monkeys around monkeys would be like something that we can't handle you know <laughs> okay. but uh, yeah but, 
uh, we want to create that kind of an ecosystem here because even our ducks are left in the natural pond here it has a lot of al uh, azolla as an algae and uh, they 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 eat on as natural food as possible so the grain intake for the hen and the duck is very less so that way we are working on the many many levels of such to make uh, to make the model of, uh, it's not that any farmer want to do everything what we are doing but each farmer or a gardener or anybody or a family can pick up some aspect of this in our farm and they can they can work on their livelihood to to improve their livelihood uh, not just about uh, like like uh, uh, having this feeling of inferiority being a farmer or a gardener or such but rather they would that they, they 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 see some kind of a dignity in it and uh, they'll see some kind of a pride in it in the, in the knowledge they have and then the Absolutely. knowledge they have on and then the knowledge they are acquired with so there is there should be some kind of a dignity to it uh, uh, we all should try to bring the dignity back to this you know it should not be seen as an industry rather but it has to be seen as a some kind of philosophical way of living you know such and and in, in yeah. this kind of situations there is a lot of scope for urban farming there is a lot of scope for uh, growing food around the cities you know because the food doesn't have to travel miles you know we can avoid that as such and i'm not talking about the carbon footprint and as such but i'm talking about the nutrition value and food for all uh, in such kind of a concept uh, we we shouldn't hand over everything to some industry and then tomorrow wait for what they're growing and uh, only depend on what they uh, because today it's so difficult to get a, even a simple humble uh, uh, a full grain uh, rice or a grain uh, atta or <laughs> or uh, or uh, or uh, oil for example you know so these are the basic things and you've not been able to get it in the in the purest form very unfortunately that we are growing so much food but then none of them come to us in a pure form so they, that way even if our vegetables and greens and all this are handed over to certain things like a mainstream uh, uh, industrial way of seeing then we'll will uh, will will only see agati kira as a medicine or a capsule or something like that rather than especially uh, with plant preservatives and things like rather than uh, eating it uh, on every day basis okay yeah wonderful sir so there's one more comment uh, what are the natural manure techniques used on the farm uh, for now we are uh, totally dependent on our cattle because we want to cut down on the inputs but since uh, as i said uh, this urban farming is interesting also because as a cities uh, we all have something called excess called garbage Yes. So a lot of lot of communities apartments are uh, in a way contributing by by kind of uh, uh, creating compost in the communities and some of the com I mean it's interesting initiative in Bangalore something called Compost Connect. So there are people uh, who are volunteering to connect those apartments and the gated communities uh, to sell their uh, compost in the communities to the farmers. So we are using that uh, nearby uh, apartment com uh, 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 community as as uh, welfare association has been uh, producing interesting uh, compost from the kitchen waste we buy that because i like it because the kitchen compost uh, is very because i done a lot of terrace gardening so i know that value of it because the all the kitchen uh, uh, compost consists of lot of types of uh, fruits and vegetables and it's a kind of a kind of a multi mineral compost so i buy that from the apartment communities it's not very expensive compared to the other manure and uh, i buy a sheep manure because the sheep uh, till now around this villages are still grazed in open sheep and goat they are not farmed like cows you know okay. so i would avoid, yeah. uh, i would avoid uh, a manure which is of uh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, like a uh, like like a uh, tied up cows and things like that they are not grazing in wild or something like that you know in the fields and also i would avoid such kind of a manure so i am okay. i am very particular about even our cows i make sure my cows uh, uh, feed on variety of greens and other things in the wild you know not just uh, to be tied and fed uh, all day from morning to evening you know uh, with other uh, with one one kind of a grass or something so i avoid i avoid uh, uh, regular cow uh, manure uh, uh, but i go with this kitchen compost i would go with the leaf litter around the around the lake beds here and i would go with the uh, uh, goat manure sheep manure and then our own uh, uh, jivamruta we regularly give to the plants and dana jivamruta we regularly make from our cow dung Okay, amazing, sir. So these vegetables that you are uh, growing in the farm, is it possible to grow them on uh, our terrace gardens, in our kitchens, balconies? Uh, definitely, only uh, sunlight is the limit for this. Whether okay. you are on 10th floor or 12th floor, it's not a problem because we know a lot of gardeners in Bombay, like cities like Bombay, they have 
they're doing wonderful uh, things on their balconies they even have honey bees and co you know beehives and things like that or they have vermi compost pits uh, in vermi compost containers and things like that. so they've gone to that extent i think there are there are ladies who also sell seeds from their balconies you know so oh, wow. only sky light sky light i don't even say sky sky only light is the limit uh okay. it's possible for you all to because all this experiments what i'm doing today in this scale is all done and tried on my terrace first so all this okay. kind of laboratory kind of situation happened on my terrace like uh, four years back so that's wow. why that's the difference i felt that why when uh, when uh, when we can we urban gardeners can do it on our terrace why uh, women in the village are not having uh, a decent kitchen garden you know with, uh, despite having all the all the resources around you know there's water there's space there's a uh, There's a cows around, the cattle around for manure and things like that. So why and also knowledge is there. So why is that? That's when the, that's how that 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 project trigger happened as such. Oh, okay, that's wonderful. So, uh, like uh, for the common, uh, the yeah, the vegetables, the known vegetables, the commonly grown vegetables that we have today, we can uh, easily get the knowledge of how to grow, what kind of uh, fertilizer to use, and uh, how much to water and all, and the soil composition. These information are currently available. But for these forgotten vegetables, as you say, how can one get information on how to grow these plants and how to take care of them, when to harvest them? so is this information available on google or online or anywhere or just people have to depend on local community uh, experienced people to help them out with that yeah, it's good to talk to the local communities otherwise also see as i said these are mostly seasonal so if okay. it is so then the nature and the climatic conditions will tell the i mean they are in symbiosis with it that which plant should thrive in which season and things like that so that way we are they are safe in that season only for example because today okay. uh, our uh, regular farming what we have made is we are growing pumpkins in all through the year and we are growing some some vegetable all through the year it's not possible like that you know in at least in a weather bangalore like weather where actually it's a very moderate climate the more or less the vegetables here can be grown all through the year we don't okay. have that experience here so that way you have to know because this is one of the biggest challenge for me uh, when i took up this project uh, to understand if something is not thriving in nature in certain seasons is it because of the season or is, is it because of the uh, uh, climatic condition like rain and sun and things like that so so that experiment happened a lot of materials like i would bring certain wild uh, green and vegetable and grow in my uh, terrace or something like all through the year and i would see that which one thrives and which doesn't thrive so when i don't see something in this season in wild i should understand whether is it because there is no rain in this season or is is it that the plant doesn't grow in this season Okay. Now do you understand? So this yeah. was the biggest for me, and uh, and also this 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 challenge always continues because if I miss on some, something learning from this season, I have to wait for another one year. Yes. You know, if I miss on doing something, then I have to wait for another one year because it will be not there; it will disappear. For example, you know. So it, it's also that I have identified a lot of uh, such uh, important greens and all from the today uh, from the traditional perspective, but it's not that I'm growing everything in my farm. if i find that something is safe in some village or some farm somewhere there i would make sure that it's there only i feel that it's threatened i would bring it into my farm and uh, nurture them for some time and then then try to multiply that and things like that so when i see that something is there so as a knowledge it's there here in my thing and also on the instagram and whatever the posts they are so uh, mm -hmm. soon we'll have a website which will have all the knowledge of it and uh, we will have all the hyperlinks and things for us to, to to connect and all that and also i'm more interested in the stories about this the the women and the people talking about this you know that is okay. much more precious to me from the from the research perspective as such you know like scientific names and then what they do to our bodies and etc and uh, i'm more interested in the in the kind of folklore of our here you know so how there are certain proverbs around this food how there are proverbs about the food about how there are uh, stories about this greens and all so for example so this agate kire and uh, polesia that uh, 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 that uh, what you call as arbi and this uh, both are, are in a way in our in our surroundings today is only only done for the death rituals so they offer this uh, precious things for the for the past uh, persons you know on their uh, on their on the ritual days but uh, at homes they are not eating so that means what they were giving uh, what they are offering to their ancestors is something very precious which they were uh, they were seeing it as very precious in the in the, in the customs in the tradition but today they are not eating them So that way, if you follow certain uh, practice and certain uh, festivities and things like that, so everything has become symbolic. 
you know so that yes. you have to look for that is where that you you kind of uh, uh, kind of gather this knowledge around this uh, such practices as such because also as uh, as we are getting uh, uh, like the generations are moving on and things like that at this times and it's also that people also have lost memory if they have not been seeing the sports for example and they would not uh, they, they would have also forgotten what it is and it yes. only the by name but not by the plant they would not identify the plant for example so yes. so it like they, like the like i talked about this batwa replaced by other batwa today you know things like that so but if you talk to the little older generation and also they also have memory issues and also a lot of people can't see properly and all that so it's very it's yeah. very challenging uh i mean, I mean uh, like challenging in the sense it's a very kind, kind of a uh, 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 i was touched with this challenges when when they can't really recollect but they know something about it and things like that so it has to be like uh, that it's good that we we now whenever we find somebody it's good that we talk to them and listen to them and we as urban folks are in a position to communicate this to a lot of people share on our share on our uh, posts uh, like on instagrams or page facebooks and things like that so that this knowledge is is available yes absolutely and so you were talking about the recipes so how did you manage to get those recipes from whom uh recipes actually i've been little adamant about it because as an artist i've been doing a lot of uh, what you call as archival project as such like documenting and things like that. so initially uh, as a, as, a, as i said this project uh, began and i was supposed to end uh, with the with the recording of the recipes in the in the villages in their homes basically so that oh. was the time this crucial this covid first phase hit us and uh, uh, and i happened to work as a covid warrior for 3 months and then uh, there was some kind of a, a scare that some kind of an uh, uneven uh, odd uh, situation occurred that uh, a woman in the village was scared of me in the sense because of the covid and all that i also respected those sentiments and uh, that, that's the project didn't take off that well at least the documentation part so whatever i had recorded then on my instagram and all it's there but as a as a, as a as a part of the video recording of uh, of this ladies cooking in their own houses is what actually i wanted you know i didn't want to them to come over in a neutral place and in like like a studio setup and cook uh, you know things like that i really wanted to have uh, cook uh, recipes in their own uh, uh, kitchens and that ambience you know whatever their their own vessels and things like that you know not like a studio setup so that that aspect of this project is still uh, kind of not happening i hope this uh, covid times and all this 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 uh, phobia and fears will ease uh, gradually so that i'll be happily uh, welcome to the families to kind of a, be part of the kitchen and uh, record but earlier i know that the pre covid times literally when i when when people and ladies especially in that whatsapp groups and they would tell that they are they're cooking bamboo shoot for example and then i have to rush back and things so i have many times i have rushed to those kitchens when they are cooking you know oh. because they would not well uh, by accident if somebody gives them a jack fruit or something like that then they they will be cooking a jack fruit curry that day so i will be informed very last minute so many times it happened that i, I rushed with tripod and camera and to record <laughs> in whatever situation like this but only this 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 uh, last uh, certain uh, uncertain things about this covid situation made me that loss so it's uh, difficult for me to be as open as before uh, because i'm always on a move and uh, i'm some committing so much i'm an outsider so i really respect their spaces and their fears also so that's some sad part of this project uh, but eventually we will love open yes absolutely amazing that's a very interesting part that you have uh, uh, discussed today sir to show the uh, environment of cooking in the homes yes. of people and how they cook and because every home has their own uh, style of cooking the same vegetable no, so it's very that interesting. is very interesting because i would i was like generalizing it but actually uh, in a village kind of a thing or uh, even every caste uh, or every different communities in the village would cook this uh, vegetables in a different style within the same village yes. Uh, yes. of course the name would be different and things like that so you know and uh, like certain vegetables would be growing uh, going into uh, into the non veg curries also which is the uh, which is uh, which is aspect is very interesting for me and i have not touched on that you know because my more or less when they when they see this project they think uh, as if like i'm only promoting vegetarian as such you know but actually uh-huh. not i have i have known that a lot of greens go into the chicken curry also you know or or some some meat is cooked with certain vegetables 
so it's yes. very interesting to understand that uh, that also so that is also another side of uh, this interesting project so, so because i respect all kind of a food system all kind of a food uh, habits what we have irrespective of what we are today you know so this is something very interesting and also today it's very political also that we talk about it you know openly you know so that there, there shouldn't be any kind of uh, inhibitions about it you know of certain uh, of certain uh, certain people's food habits and certain people's uh, knowledge about it we don't have to feel uh, uh, discomfort about somebody eating something you know so we have to really yeah. respect Yes, yes, absolutely. So, what you are doing is very amazing, and uh, your uh, concept and your uh, thought process to, you know, make this big, and you know, bring back the old traditions and going back back to our roots, getting connected with our root again, and with the natural uh, growth that is around us, and avoiding the hybrid and organic stuff. and uh, like and going with the organics and the natural thing is a very uh, amazing concept and we've really enjoyed hearing what you've done today and uh, you've talked about today and we're looking forward to all the recipes and the other things that you've talked about on your instagram page hopefully soon you know it's there if you go back to like uh, one year back for and things like that there are recipes but and, and if people okay. are sometimes request, request on whatsapp and all i'm definitely share because we have a whatsapp groups here made for our customers and also for the other uh, common friends around and okay. uh, so share uh, whatever where i'm cooking or when i see something interesting happening around or uh, during the festivals and things like that so knowledge is always shared you know so there's nothing as a but uh, it's not in one place uh, so that people can look forward so definitely at least i can assure that you know uh, some 10 or 15 authentic curries recipes are always there for somebody to uh, instantly cook you know things like that for example the i am very fond of greens you know i would cook uh, greens all three days in a week you know okay. so because it's it's very nutrition because I, I, yeah this is a experiment i'm trying to uh, try on myself and my daughter that we didn't eat cabbage and cauliflower for two years or three years until my uh, one of my uh, uh, a uh, uh, partner farmer was uh, uh, started growing uh, cabbage and cauliflower in organic way until then we never ate the cabbage so definitely we are not deficient of of cabbage and cauliflower in our bodies you know because that's not from yes. here because that coming from that comes from all the way because the, the other day the two days back i was listening to the story on scroll that uh, reading about the story that cabbage uh, came to india just 200 years back and uh, today and sorry cauliflower and today we uh, cabbage and cauliflower today we swear by them all across yeah. the india so but yeah. uh, 60 years back or 50 years back nobody knew about cabbage in bangalore for example no farmer would have been growing that today we want yeah. to grow such a uh, 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 like a mild temperature climate uh, wanting uh, vegetable in a cooler like condition uh, which is very hot and also they definitely need lot of pesticides there's, uh, there's no point in eating them you know so today yeah. we know that how grapes are literally dipped in uh, 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 like you know pesticides and grown you know so so this is something that i really feel very uncomfortable about not only from the health yeah hello uh yes sorry uh, there was some uh, issue Okay. Hello, sir. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear. You. Yeah, this uh, we we are having a storm, a sandstorm here, so there's a little fluctuation in the connection. Okay. So uh, it was amazing hearing from you, sir, and that uh, brings yeah. us uh, to the end of this session. so it was a very inspiring and motivational journey that you have shared with us and i'm sure a lot of people will get motivated uh, after watching this workshop and they will start growing these wild uh, vegetables and all yeah thank you very much and uh, feel free to comment or uh, ask or uh, join us uh, whenever you are around and things like that just that uh, if you want to uh, if you want to proceed and all we have to be informed the advance and you have to come uh, in person itself because we we are not in a position to post the seeds and very sorry about that as we have seeds and uh, we feel now we being giving the seeds for free on the only condition that they come to the farm and take it uh, because we really don't have that kind of manpower 
to somebody to sit and post them and because we are also having for, for us to think about posting something and so uh, excuse on that front because whoever is passing through bangalore we are in south bangalore not very far well connected by road and uh, there's also train uh, station nearby so that way you can arrange your uh, travel and uh, definitely uh, we'll be happy to share the seats what we have at things like and uh, those who are in bangalore city who just want to try our greens and some of the vegetables these vegetables they can always buy on uh, parmesan and organic tap and things like that okay thank you so much sir and we thank all the audience who have joined us today and uh, we are looking forward to uh, you know seeing more of your amazing work sir and thank you so much for your time thank you zara you valuable us today. Uh, to be very thankful to you because you've been very being very patient with me <laughs> because of uh, <laughs> communication. My pleasure. And, uh, uh, and uh, today, all this to set up this such a formal space in a uh, in uh, in a farm was really interesting and challenging. And thanks for this. It was a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you so and much. Thanks to all those who are watching, and uh, I know there are a lot of friends who know me actually. And uh maybe yes so i hopefully i get a feedback from there get feedback about this session thank you very much thank you sir bye bye